had a very good day in Changsha. We started off by going to a Hunan Embroidery Workshop or Embroidery Institute uh, where they do embroidery but they also have a bit of a museum sort of chronicling the history of embroidery uh, in the region and it just impressed me immensely. I mean I've seen Chinese embroidery on things like silk jackets and slippers and it's gorgeous but this was just so incredibly intricate and such fine work and they also did things I'd never seen before with embroidery. They have developed here in Changsha different kinds of embroidery stitches that let them mimic paintings. They had portraits of people that you would swear were paintings, but they're actually just really, really fine embroidery. Actually, one piece in the gallery that was really entertaining, too, was one that had a tiger on one side and a panda on the other. And looking straight on, it was a panda. And then you spun it, and it was a tiger. And you spun it back, and it was a panda. And then you spun it, and it was a tiger. And the shape, the tiger, you know, is coming forward while the panda is reclining back. But you couldn't tell. There was no bleed through. You know, the image didn't come across until you spun it, and then it was two different images. Uh, we also got to go in and, and watch the workshop where the women are doing some of the embroidery, and none of them had glasses on, it just killed me. But they're just sitting there with an actual photograph or an actual painting, copying from it. There also was a man in there doing a huge painting, a brush painting that covered the entire wall, and when he was done with it, they were going to do a reproduction of it in embroidery and it I got to try my hand they have one little embroidery stand set up for people to practice on for the less experienced women to practice on so I got to do a few I couldn't even thread the needle That's so fun <laughs> I mean, I can sew, and I've done a little needlework with my grandmother before, but I couldn't even thread the needle, but it, it was difficult. It's difficult just because you're coming up from the bottom to even figure out where the needle's coming up. There's a street in Changsha that's lined with antique shops. There's some beautiful wood, carved wood pieces, um, beautiful scrolls. Many of them, the date, you have no idea. You can't tell whether it's something that was mass produced relatively recently or if it's a thousand years old. So there's an opportunity to really find something that suits you and is really something you're looking for out of China's history. I've been looking for a Buddha since I got here to give to my friend Tim, who's inspired me in a lot of the Eastern philosophical ways. And today, when I walked into one shop, I saw this Jade Buddha sitting under a glass case, and it struck me. Uh, it leaped out at me. You know, it was well-proportioned, well-defined. It was a little dirty, but it had a lot of character. And so immediately, I wanted it. And unfortunately, I think I showed I wanted it too much because I couldn't bargain that much with the guy. We went back and forth a little bit. I think if I had persisted, I could have gotten down a little more, but, you know, it was the perfect Buddha, so I kind of had to go with it. We happened to be there right when school let out, so first there are all these parents there to pick up the kids, but uh, what was really fun is right outside of the school, a man uh, had set up his little stand to sell these little candies. They're little rice balls that he rolls in, in a powder. I think it's a sesame powder. And the kids were just going nuts over these. So uh, Nick and I, of course, had to try them. It was really fun because the kids, uh, I think, all take English classes in school. They get language class pretty early on. And so they all knew to say hello. And we said hello back. Uh, What's your name? My name is Christine. What's your name? My name is uh, Richard. Richard? Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye. It was really fun to be able to actually talk to some of the kids, even though it was just with a few little phrases. It was a ton of fun. 
and then just down from the school. We kind of follow the kids down from the school. There's a courtyard and an apartment building that we ducked into, and uh, Nick got to play some pool. I've been playing pool a little more recently than I have been in a long time, so I decided to take one of the locals up. I bet America and I lost, so we kind of got to hand the country over to China now. I tried my best, but you know, it was a tough game. The people milling around were really excited that a foreign devil had come to their table and taken them up on playing. Definitely I heard oohs and ahs. And I think I conceded a generous defeat, but, you know, I lost the country. <laughs> My favorite part of today was getting Jade Buddha. This is a, a solid Jade Buddha. It's a little dirty, you know, it's, a, it's a little worn, but uh, so that's part of the character. Changsha feels different from the other places that we've been so far. You know, in Beijing and uh, in Zhengzhou, we've been seeing these more major sites. So I uh, saw the Great Wall, Forbidden City, the Yellow River, things like that, where you're just sort of looking around in amazement, trying to process it all, uh, but. Uh, not getting a sense of, you know, daily life. Whereas here in Changsha, um, more of what we've done is sort of regular level, accessible things. As you go, and as you meet more people, and as you get a better feeling for the society, eventually you find out it's pretty much the same. We all have the same intrinsic motivations, and we're all looking for the same thing, you know, to have a good time and shoot a good pool game, so. Yeah, Changsha. Hmm.